What's going on everyone? Today on Puddin's Fab Shop I got a quick tip for y'all on setting up your Langmuir Crossfire Plasma Table. So let's get started. First I want to say if you don't have one of these plasma tables then this video won't really apply to you. Um, but before you leave the channel, be sure to hop over, check out some of my other videos, always working on the hot rods, doing cool metal stuff. Uh, so check it out, maybe I got something else you like. Here's where I had an issue when assembling my table. I make it to video number seven, machine alignment. And in that video, they tell you to bring your torch holder all the way out here. Um, you set it to the top without a water table, to the chamber with the water table, whatever. And then you're supposed to be able to cycle it back and forth and clear all your slats. And you, they claim you should have about the same gap in between there. Well, mine wasn't close. I mean, it was, it was probably, it was over an eighth inch off. Um, it, it was pretty bad. So there's a really good Facebook group, which I don't remember what it's called right now, but if you look up the Langmuir uh, Crossfire Plasma Table, you'll find it. There's a lot of good information in there. I posted a picture in there, asked if anyone had similar problems. I was actually thinking my water table may be warped because these slashes sit down in here. So I was thinking they're a little higher on this backside. A um, few people said they have similar, similar problems. Some people said, don't worry about it. Some people said, you know, there's tolerances and everything, but over an eighth is quite a bit. Um, one guy posted up a, some good information and he said he had contacted them with a similar issue and they said, you could adjust on these uh, set screws up here. And these set screws, adjust the preload on these bearings now they said that sometimes these bearings come loose during shipping and that you could apply a little bit of torque to your set screws here that should reload these bearings um, i tried that and the bearings would not one may get tighter but the other one that was loose would still say loose so after messing with it a couple times i decided to go ahead and break screw or break loose both these screws here and after I did that, I was able to push the whole bearing assembly down onto the axis, tighten them up, and then I had a torque on both bearings. Or not torque, I just had load on both bearings, I mean. And then after that, I was able to uh, run the set screw back down just till I feel it bump, give it a little baby turn after that to set some preload on it. And I had to do that to like three of these bearing assemblies because they weren't actually on the axis here, on the rail. All right, so once I had the load on each one of these bearings set. That way you can go around and try to spin them and none of them spin. Um, I tried to travel it through. It still wasn't right and I thought, duh, I need to reset it how they teach us in the video. So I tried that. I set my torch holder down. Um, well, I broke the four bolts loose, put the torch holder down, tried to cycle it through. It was still off. It was getting real close on these last two here. And I started thinking, Instead of setting it off of this thing, I came back here and I measured to the top of our x-axis there, guide rail, and it was like right at 8 inches. So I come out here and it was like 8 and 3 sixteenths. So instead of setting it up using this, I decided to try to match the like 8 inches out to here to match back here because you take the load off this, this shouldn't change back here any, I mean, it's right there on the bearings. So, I broke the bolts loose again. I used the torch holder to slowly adjust until I got this right at the eight inches as well. Um, once I got it matching back here, I set load on, or I set the torque on these bolts, uh, used the eighth inch shim, cycled it through, and it was good, but it was a little loose at the back. Like the, uh, the front may actually need to come up just a hair. So hopefully you can see right here, what I did when I had this down was with the load on it, I took a razor blade and I put a little mark the first time I did it. When I realized I need to pick it up a little more, I, uh, I broke the bolts loose again, picked it up hair, hair above that little scribe line um, reset the torch right there, scribed it again, uh, retorqued the bolts, and I ran it through, and it's finally good. So, 
This is an eight inch shim. Get it dropped down there. And we're gonna set the thumb screw. All right, come down here opposite end. Pretty good, guys. Way better than what I had originally. All right, guys. I know I'm not the best at doing instructional videos, but hopefully that helps some of y'all out and uh, maybe fixes some of y'all's problems. Because now it looks like I can carry on with assembling this thing, and maybe in the next couple days since I'm off work, I can finally make a cut with it. Uh, so that's it for this quick video. I appreciate y'all watching. Be sure to share, subscribe, comment, leave me feedback, whether it's good or bad. Hop over to Instagram, give me a follow on there at Puddin's Fab Shop, and I'll see you guys next time.